Students, I'm Dr. Benson Joroge, the Dean School of Education. I want us to look at uh, how we prepare for online examinations. You would agree with me that uh, we are used to face-to-face -face, uh, cross book examinations, but uh, as you know with the uh, current uh, COVID situation, you cannot be able to sit for your face-to-face -face examinations. And that's why uh, we have prepared this uh, uh, orientation for online examinations. Now, um, what are online examinations? Uh, what is the difference between the examinations you have been doing in the past and these exams? Are they different? So what uh, preparation do you need to do so that you prepare for these exams? That is the main purpose uh, for this uh, presentation. Maybe we move on. By the end of this presentation, I expect that uh, uh, you should be able to demonstrate understanding on online examinations. Be able to differentiate between closed book and open book examinations. And be able to demonstrate understanding on preparation of online examinations. Um, so in this respect, what is an online examination? An online examination is an evaluation of students' uh, skills, uh, knowledge skills and competencies, where the, the test is conducted via the internet using web technologies. The online examination requires internet, running management system, and devices to, exam to, ac to access the examination, such as laptops, smartphone, desktop, tablets, etc. So in this case, um, and in the context of Mount Kenya University, uh, we are going to use a running management system, uh, the Sakai, uh, to access the exams. And then, of course, uh, for you to be able to access your exam, you must require maybe to have a laptop, maybe a smartphone, uh, or, or a desktop computer, or a tablet. Then, are there different types of online examinations? Yes, the answer is yes. There are two types of online examinations, that is the closed book and the open book uh, online examinations. So what is a closed book uh, examination? This is the traditional mode of assessment in which the students are allowed to take no notes, uh, no books or other reference material into the examination room. Actually here we rely, you rely on your memory to respond to questions in the exam. And these are the, the exams that we have been ha having. But even in the online environment, you still not be required to bring any notes with you. So in this case, uh, you don't bring any re re reference material into the examination room. And you wholly rely on what you have learned. But the, there is other sets of exams, what we call the open book uh, online examinations. Here, the student is allowed or the candidate is allowed to bring into the examination room reference materials including access to online materials. So, you are not uh, uh, limited. Uh, in this case, you can bring your notes, you can bring a textbook, uh, you can be able to um, go within the internet and to guide you in, uh, uh, as you respond to uh, the questions asked. So it's an assessment method designed in a way that allows candidates to refer to either class notes, any summaries, or a memory aid, textbook, or any other approved material while answering questions. We move on. Then what type of um, examination questions do you expect for online exams? We can have a number of them. The first one is uh, multiple choice questions, MCQs. You can also have the true false type of questions. Fill in the blank, fill in the multiple blanks, or even have a fire upload. We can also have uh, short answer questions. Then we have um, objective structured clinical examinations, especially for the medical school. Then you have essay type of questions. Here you may have case studies, application questions, scenario-based questions. If you look at uh, these type of questions, then uh, you could have hard written. You could be able to respond to diagrams, uh, or maybe draw a diagram, 
or even do some calculations to certain problems. So um, when you talk about the type of questions you expect in an online examination, uh, those five uh, areas. So the type of examinations here you, you, you would expect uh, you, you are likely to be asked uh, could fall within these uh, type of questions. Then we move on. Then let's, look, let's now focus on closed book examinations. So this is where you write an exam, keeping in mind all that you have studied without consulting the textbook or the notebooks. You are not required to bring any examination, any, any reference material to the examination room. So in this case, um, the type of questions that we have discussed uh, um, in the earlier slide, that uh, you could be required to um, maybe analyze a case, uh, could be your prior knowledge across chapters. You could have um, the, the short answer questions. Um, so depending on the kind of questions that the, the, the examiner will set. So remember this, that these examinations are one, they are timed. Two, they are invigilated. So we can have, um, when we talk about invigilation, um, in, in, in our scenario in this case, we are going to use uh, Microsoft Teams to monitor you as you sit for these examinations. Uh, later on, um, maybe in future, we are going to do live proctoring of these examinations, where uh, we'll have uh, a software like a, a, a lockdown browser and a responders monitor to monitor you as you do the exam. And it, so it, it use artificial intelligence to actually monitor the way you are doing the exams. Then, for closed book online examinations, they test all efforts of the Broom's taxonomy. Maybe here I need to explain a little bit. We have six efforts uh, the lecturer can use to test uh, uh, you, as you uh, in, in the question set. They can, the lecturer can test knowledge questions, memory recall, then uh, understanding type of questions to show whether have you, are you able to uh, recall facts, are you able to discuss, are you able to explain what you have learned within the classroom setup to demonstrate understanding. Then uh, the third therefore is the application. So you're, are you able to apply the knowledge learned in, in, in new situations? Are you able to, for example, you have been taught a certain formula, are you able to apply to work out some problems? Then we can also have analysis questions. So in analysis questions, um, this is where you, you, you get uh, maybe a, uh, the entire picture of something, then you break it into parts. What I mean is this, like when you are reading, for example, those who are doing literature, you have done an awful uh, things for a part, comedian, secondary referring. Um, then you would ask you, you see that's the entire book, then we ask you to break down and maybe show what are the themes in the book, okay? So, or you may get a, um, a storyline, uh, and then we ask you questions from there so to show are you able to analyze situations. Then, uh, then we have um, the evaluation questions. In evaluation questions, we want you to give value judgment about uh, a situation. Um, remember this, we are training you to uh, be critical thinkers. So um, in that case, are you able to give value judgment to a situation? Then uh, the last one is, uh, uh, the, the last is creation. Are you able to create uh, new knowledge? So we'll ask you um, questions where you are able to demonstrate uh, uh, generation of new knowledge. So we are going, in, in closed book uh, examinations, they are within that spectrum and can be able to test all efforts. We move on. Then what are the requirements for closed book examinations? The first thing you must do is uh, you must be able to access Microsoft Teams. So what you need to do is uh, download Microsoft Teams uh, from either in your, in, your, in your laptop or in your smartphone or in your desktop. Then uh, once you download, you can be able to log in using your MKU email, you, re, you sign in. Then uh, during the date of the examination, you'll be able to log in into Microsoft Teams, go to your calendar, you'll be able to see 
uh, the examination uh, set there. Like, let's say, let's say something like BET for 2008, Educational Technology. So you click in there, and you are able to get into uh, that examination. Uh, actually, we use it to uh, inifigure it. So the lecturer will be able to, to see you as you sit for your examination. So you need to access the Microsoft Teams for infiguration. Then uh, you need, therefore, the, 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 the laptop that you are using must have a webcam. Because uh, we, we need to see you as you sit for your examination. So in that, in that case, you need to have a, a student's email. So if you don't have one, you can create uh, an, an email uh, using the link uh, given here, the student's email, reg.mku.ac.ke. You, you, you log in, and, and uh, then you create your own email. Then uh, you need to access the examination via the link below. So in other words, uh, during the date of the examination, use this link assessment.mku.ac.ke stroke portal. Then you log in with your, with, your, uh, with your details or credentials. The username is your registration number. And the password, you can use maybe your ID number, the passport number, the mobile number. Or even if you have um, been able to change uh, your password to your own created password, you, you need to log in. So I want to emphasize that uh, for cross book examinations, we will monitor what you are doing uh, on the other end, using Microsoft Teams. And therefore, you must be able to have um, downloaded the software, in uh, the one you have been using during the running, uh, so it's the one you are still going to use. Then you'll be able to access, to access your exam uh, through this uh, link. We move on. Then uh, how do you ac access the exam in the running management system? or in the exam portal. So you use the link, assessment.mku.ac.ke stroke portal. Once you get in, you log in your, with your credentials. Then you click membership as the third step. Then uh, you click the title of the unit. So once you click membership, all the units you have registered within a semester, or you have registered to, to do the exams, will appear there. Then you choose the unit. Then uh, once you choose the unit, on the left hand side, um, there are several tools, and one of the tools is the test and quizzes tool. You click that tool, and then once you get in, you will be able to read the instructions. Then uh, step number seven is the pledge of, of honor. We want you to pledge that the, the exam you are doing, you are the one who is doing it, you are not faking, um, it's you who is doing the exam, uh, you are not uh, um, impersonating, and you you be honest. Remember this. Besides, ask uh, Mount Kenya first uh, training you to acquire knowledge, skills, and competencies. We want you to gain values, and one of the values is honesty. We want you to be honest. So you must also be able to pledge to give a pledge of honor that I will do my exams um, honestly without cheating without referencing anywhere, um, because this is a cross-book exam examination. Remember this, when uh, we, are, we, we are monitoring you through the Microsoft Teams, we require you to, um, once you get to the examination room, you display your exam examination card uh, for identification. Uh, you, you demonstrate, you, you, you present your um, a student ID card, so that uh, we may know you are the one, and then we allow you to start the exam. So we want honesty that you can also pledge there and say, these exams that I'm doing, um, you are honest, you are the one. Then uh, you, you click begin assessment button to start the examination. We move on. Uh, as you do the examinations, you may be required to do a file upload. So this, this is a question for examination. For example, those who are doing uh, mathematics, those who are doing chemistry, uh, those uh, we, uh, who are doing, um, uh, who require to work out or draw diagrams or questions. So what, you, what do you need to do? You need to have writing materials. Uh, of course, you, need, you require your pen and then piece, uh, maybe a book. Uh, you, you work out the problem. And then when you work out the problem, 
you scan using your mobile phone camera or a scanner then uh, for, for when you, if you are using your phone using your USB, US, USB cable you connect uh, your phone to the laptop or to the desktop um, so that you are able to access the phone storage then when you get there you 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 you, you are able to um, you go back to the examination site you click upload uh, and then you choose the file location and then you click on the file name which is uh, either in your laptop or maybe in, in uh, if i'm not moved it from the laptop it is still in your mobile phone then uh, you click open and then you wait for it to upload and then once you are done you save and move to the next question so there are questions that will demand that you do fire upload so in that case that's what you should do then we move on we look at now what is an open book examination this is uh, an examination where students uh, or candidates uh, can uh, will come to the examination room um, with materials uh, maybe if it's there are two types of examinations we will talk about that so you require to come you can come back, uh, come with your notes uh, reference materials but the, the key word is here that uh, the kind of questions set for the open book we require you to develop critical thinking and um, critical thinking and also critical skills so in this case uh, you may come with your materials in the examinations but the kind of question set will require you to uh, uh, analyze a situation and be able to give um, um, to generate knowledge uh, the, the, we talked about the, the different levels so we'll ask you application questions we'll ask you analysis questions evaluation questions we also uh, ask you um, uh, um, questions where you will be required to create uh, uh, knowledge so so in this case you can you can refer to some materials during the examination there are two types of open book examinations one of them is restricted examination uh, open book examination so here the lecturer will only allow you to come to the examination with um, a prescribed specific material for example may tell you to come with a book a specific book and we refer you to a case study in that book or um, maybe uh, we look at some material given and you only reference that so in that case with an open book examination which is restricted you are only allowed to come to the examination with prescribed specific materials as guided by the examiner then we have um, type 2 that is the open book examination called unrestricted open book examination so in this case you come with materials during the examination um, there's no limit on what you can bring to the examination uh, room or even if, if it's a take-home test you can be able to refer to materials could be your class notes could be a certain reference book could be the internet so you are not restricted then what is the rationale for open book exams this is a situ we, we, the open book exams are set on the premise that uh, your lecturers will be able to set questions that require you to answer in more critical or analytical ways so in other words they encourage high order thinking skills so in this case remember this um, the world today we require critical thinkers people who are able to apply um, skills at a high level the high order thinking skills so in this case the open book exams will actually test these levels so in an open book examination the focus is not on memorization we don't want you to memorize information but we want you to apply information we want you to analyze a situation we want you to evaluate a situation we want you to create or generate knowledge so in this case you'll be interpreting information in the context of specific questions and scenarios so with open book examinations we want you to sort of apply the information you are you are not limited you are, the, the the lecturer gives in a, the stem of the question 
in information which you can also even uh, refer or concur from a book, from your notebook, from your lesson notes, from the module, from a textbook. But the key word is this. The questions set will require you to generate knowledge. So in this case, um, we will give you case scenarios and then you are, you are able to tell us. For example, I give a case scenario of an op open book exam. Uh, we have COVID now. If you remember that uh, when there was cessation of movement, uh, there could be a farmer who want to transport his uh, tom tomatoes from one county to another. But due, due to the cessation, maybe uh, he could not be able to move those uh, tomatoes maybe to a person who had contracted that farmer. So in that case, um, if the tomatoes go bad and they have not reached the owner, will the owner pay the supplier? Will, will the owner pay the, the farmer? Those are the, the, the kind of questions we need to generate. So a question, a question in business law could be of that kind. Another situation, uh, for example, um, a question in research methodology. We would put a case that uh, we give you a topic uh, of research and then we ask you to state maybe objectives from there. For instance, we, 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 we can give a case of um, uh, maybe uh, an issue of, um, for example, maybe in business, we would say that uh, competitive strategies, effects of uh, influence of competitive strategies on, uh, on, 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 on financial performance of commercial banks, you see? Then we ask you questions, state the objectives, all right? So you, you must, even if, even if you have your book, you can reference and, and check what are, the, what are the characteristics of um, objectives, you see? They must be smart. Uh, these objectives must have uh, the IV and DV. You reference that, but you have now to look at the scenario, okay? Specific questions or scenario. You look at that scenario, and then you are able to generate the objectives of such a study. We will ask you maybe methods, suitable methods of data correction. You see, you, you have in your book the, the different methods of data correction. But this, we want you to actually respond to uh, this scenario. What are the types of methods of data correction suitable for this specific case? All right. Then we ask you to look at um, maybe to draw a conceptual framework. Uh, with that scenario. So you see, even if you have your notes, they, 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 we, we are not so much interested with the, the information in your notes. But how are you able to apply that information in those, in those notes uh, in the current scenario or a specific question? So that's the difference between the closed book and the open book exams. Then memorization is, is largely unnecessary for open book examinations because you are, we want you to actually apply knowledge. However, don't say that you don't need to study. You must study for open book exams. Although the focus is on understanding the material rather than memorization, you got to study for open book exams. Then uh, we move on. What are the pitfalls for open book examinations? Most students will say, oh, uh -huh. if the, scenario, the case scenario will be given, do I need to study? The answer is, Yo, oh, yes, you need to study. So you maybe uh, think that uh, you don't need to prepare. You just need to go to the examination room and wrestle with the question. That's false hope. That's a false sense of security. You need to prepare. Open book examinations requires a genuine understanding of the material. And you are able to interpret, to think critically, and present an organized and well-written answer. So remember this. We are training you to be able to demonstrate the competences of the 21st century learner. Communication and collaboration. Self-efficacy. Uh, critical thinking and problem solving. So in this case, we require you to show uh, how you are able to arrange your answers, where organized answer and how you present them. Communication, communication, uh, communication skills. We want to see 
uh, uh, critical thinking, uh, problem solving. Those are, those are some of the issues we want to uh, uh, see you generate in an open book examinations. So that when we present you to the employer, we are very confident that uh, you have the 21st century skills. Then, but with a little bit of preparation, with not taking skills and test taking, taking strategies, you can succeed in an open book examination. So you only need to prepare. Um, we are going to look at that. How do you take notes as you prepare for the open book examination? Then uh, how do you study? Uh, how do you take the test? We are going to look at that. Sound So how do you prepare for online examinations, online open book examinations? The first thing is planning for the examinations. And the, the first item there is you must book for the examinations. How do you book for an examination? So you go to your student portal, uh, you open your uh, student portal using your credentials, then you click course registration, then you go to examination registration, then uh, when you go to the examination registration, you will be able to see all the units you have registered within, uh, within that semester. And therefore, you choose uh, the, 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 the year, that is, in this case, it will be 2019, 2020. You choose the semester, that is January, April. Then once you do that, you, click, you choose the unit that uh, you, you want uh, uh, you want to, to, to register the exams for, then you choose the examination session. For example, if the exam will be done on uh, 5th August 2020, and you do the first session between 8 and 11, so you choose that. So you can choose the different examination sessions uh, across, the, across the day. Because we, we all uh, appreciate that uh, maybe where you come from, um, maybe you are able to do your exams comfortably between 11 and 2 p.m. 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. 5.30 and uh, 8 p.m. 8.30 p.m. So, or maybe between 8 and 11. So you choose the time you feel comfortable. So we have offered a unit uh, within a day. And then you are able to choose different sessions. Note, in case of one reason or another, and you feel that... Uh, you may not take, you may be able to take a, 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 an exam in a certain session. You can push it to another session. You can reschedule. Maybe perhaps uh, if you have, um, let's say, you have, been, you have information that uh, there will be no power in, in your place in, or in your area uh, between 8 and 10, but there will be power between 2 and 5 p.m. So you can reschedule the exam. But remember this, rescheduling is only done once. So if you do it a second time, uh, uh, you may not, it may not be successful. So therefore, you reschedule the exam only once. So the first step for doing online examination, that is either closed book or open book, is to book for the examinations. You book, you schedule the examination. You, uh, the, the date, remember the date and the time. Once you have that, once you have booked the exam, there are certain things that you need to look through. You need to, to read through. There the are important resources that you need to read. One is the general university examination guidelines. Because these guidelines uh, still apply here. Then there is examination irregularities and penalties. You need to be conversant with that. Then uh, online assessment and examination guidelines. There are guidelines which the university has uh, been able uh, to, uh, to, uh, to formulate, which have been passed by Senate for online assessment and examination. So kindly familiarize yourself. They spell out uh, the entire spectrum of online examination. So you need to read through uh, the, the guidelines. Then the examination timetables, very, very key. Then uh, from there, you need to create your revision and examination environment. The ideal environment would be a private space. Even if it would mean a corner of your bedroom, but with a chair and a table. But uh, we understand, we all come from different environments. And therefore, 
uh, with that appreciation, uh, you need to look for, to get a space uh, where you can be able to do your exams. So in this case, um, if, you are sh if you are sharing maybe a house, you are, you are staying with your, with your family, uh, maybe there will be likely to be noise. So you need to prepare to have headphones. So they, they, they help you to actually um, keep off noises. So if you are sharing a room, uh, maybe with your brother or your sister, you need uh, the headphones uh, to keep off uh, the noises off. Then uh, if you don't have a table, what else can you do? You can find a flat surface to work on. Maybe uh, you can use uh, a bed, a cabinet, a, a, a garden furniture, or even a deep window uh, ridge or a floor where you can be able to uh, quickly work uh, uh, your exam. Then set up your laptop, PC, or any, uh, or any other web-enabled device to work on. So you may have your smartphone. Then during the examination day, um, let everyone in the house know when you are studying or taking your exam. So as to try to limit the interruptions. Or, to, or you can even choose times uh, to study or take your exam when it is quieter in the house. So you, you may realize that uh, maybe between 10 and 11, uh, members, members of your family are there taking their breakfast. So you may choose to do the exam between 11, uh, 11 maybe and 2, when the, maybe the, the house is a little quieter. Maybe, the, maybe if you have younger ch uh, siblings or, or the other children in the house, they are, they are, maybe they're outside. Maybe, uh, maybe you are, your parents are at work. So the, the environment within the house is a little quieter. Then ensure you have water to drink. Water helps keep the mind focused. Then once you have created uh, a good revision and examination environment, what got you to do? You need now to do step two, revision and practice for your online exams. So here, there are four areas, there are five, uh, five, six areas that you need to look at. You need to create uh, your own revision and examination practice timetable. You, want to ident you need to identify what to revise on. You locate and highlight or mark key areas before, you, uh, before the exam, especially for open book. Then uh, we, you need, we look at the uh, strategies for studying open book exams. Then uh, we look at uh, revision strategies and then logistics that uh, you need to, take, to put into place. So the first thing is uh, creating your own revision and examination timetable. Create a time, a time plan, covering the period from, from now until the day you are, you are for your last exam. Remember this, failing to plan is planning to fail. So kindly plan. You can put all your exams, have a, a, a timetable, put all your exams um, in that timetable with examination dates. Then, uh, then you need to put uh, in that timetable periods when you do your revision and uh, breaks, when you, you take a break. I advise you that uh, take revision like a job. Make it a full day's work with appropriate breaks. When you have identified exactly what you need to do, uh, uh, you need to revise. I update the, 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 the timetable that you have. That I'll, I'll, I'll do this, I'll have this unit this day, I'll study it for two hours, I'll have a break, i study another one, or different subtopics within a unit. This spring is very important. Stick to your timetable. If you find that uh, sometimes when you are revising, you may find that uh, you have enough time or um, you have done what you wanted to revise or, or you had planned, but you still have, you feel that you still want to do, to do more, kindly move on. But don't miss your meals. Times for refreshments or maybe rest. So kindly go ahead and, uh, and do that. Because uh, once you extend so much, uh, you miss it out and you lose out. So remember, uh, work smarter. So not, uh, look at this. The quality matters, not the quantity. So uh, do a, a good timetable, which you can be able to use uh, to revise. Then identify what to revise. So like uh, read and note the, uh, the running outcomes within 
a certain unit. Because actually when the, the lecturers are setting the papers, they look at the learning outcomes and they're able to set the questions uh, which will be able to bring out the learning outcomes. So list all the topics and identify the core topics. Those topics which the, rector, the lecturers or your teacher emphasized during the classroom or during assignments or maybe they provided a reading list. So look at those core, core topics, the, the, is, the areas that the lecturer is likely to test. Then take an, undertake an audit of all the topics to identify what you need to know and what you don't need to know so that you focus on what you need to know. Then divide what you need to revise into manageable sections and add these details to your efficient plans. So look at your strong areas. Uh, you can check within the, the entire topic, uh, within the entire unit. Uh, topic one, two, three, I'm okay with that. Topic five, six, um, have weak area. So weak area. So you need to put a little more emphasis on that. So you look at the strong areas, you emphasize. But uh, you look more into the other areas that you, you, you are not well fast, conversant with. So that uh, by the end of the day, you have um, been able to prepare for everything. So as you revise, do not study everything uh, maybe in the night before, all right? So you need to identify what do I need to look at, okay? Then we move on. Locate and highlight key information before hard. So you have your notes. What you, you need to, to do is uh, mark the key terms, historical dates, could be questions or, or other difficult things to remember or other difficult materials to remember. So uh, check through and highlight. So in this case, you can use, uh, you can mark the pages using dog gear. You can dog gear important pages. So you take a book and you are able to uh, mark within, uh, within the areas where where you where you, where perhaps you need to to, to 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 look at depending on the revision plan there are areas where the lecturer emphasizes more so you can take your book and fold um maybe uh, uh, you can dog gear the important pages you can also use uh, sticky notes on on several pages or maybe key areas where there are equations where there are um, um maybe historical dates or key terms then so you need to look at this. Therefore, but in case of uh, a restricted exam, uh, you also revise and put these, uh, mark those key points which you revised before, like in a closed book examination, in, also in a restricted examination. So uh, like um, you'll be only required to use only one particular book, but uh, there could be other efficient materials. So you can uh, do that quickly so that uh, the, 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 the few days before the exam, you only refer to those key areas. Or during the, the, the actual open book exam, uh, when a question is quickly asked, you know where to reference, uh, depending on the page that is the, where the information is, is located. So you highlight and mark key important information before hard. Then what are the strategies for studying for open book exams? Write your own com commentary and insights into your notes. Challenge yourself. Look at uh, the questions, any model questions um, that the lecturer gave or the answers uh, that, that maybe a lecturer gave. Or maybe when you are reading an area, try to look at uh, that area in, uh, in an open mind and uh, look at what, what could be, uh, challenge yourself. What else, uh, suppose this question is asked this way, how do I respond? You can be able to quickly put um, a commentary uh, or an insight into your notes, I would, I would maybe like you to respond in this way, uh, in that case. For example, if you, are, if you ask a question, for ex uh, let's say like uh, now that we're having this uh, inclusive education, and the lecturer asks you to look at, to, to uh, discuss strategies that you can use in your classroom uh, to ensure that uh, we have inclusiv inclusivity in, your, in, in, in the classroom. So you can quickly look at how will I respond to that question uh, so you can scribble something in your notes. Uh, if the lecturer asks maybe a question like, uh, uh, maybe those in education, um, how are you going to um, maybe have your classrooms uh, post-COVID when we open in January, for example? 
how will you how will be the setting of their classroom how will be the environment within the dining halls so in that covid situation as a teacher what are you likely to do so you see that's a novel question that a, a lecturer is likely to test so you need to scribble somewhere how you are likely to respond to that question a lecturer may, be, may ask a question like uh, uh, develop a, a lesson plan develop a, a table of specification develop a, a scheme of work so how can you quickly do that so remember this is a, a situation when the, which will demand you to generate uh, information to, to critically think as you think for the examination so you can be able to quickly uh, um, as you revise your notes uh, you, you, you can quickly do commentaries or insight in your notes then you can also remember this we have said another skill that we, we want uh, to emphasize the 21st century skill is collaboration so collaborate team up with other students and you can discuss and debate on content to help you learn how to apply the information you have learned. So you can do this via the Teams. You can uh, do Zoom. You can do Microsoft Groups, uh, Micros, uh, WhatsApp Groups, Microsoft Teams. You can also discuss this one in the forums within the learning management system. So collaboration, collaborate with others. Let uh, other students set, set questions, set it, set, post it in a group. Let others see how you, uh, they can be able to respond to it. So you, that way, you are able to revise uh, very quickly. So team up uh, in, within your classroom, a few of you, a number of you, or maybe the entire class if you have like 30 or 40, and then you, you create a WhatsApp group very quickly, and you can be able to uh, revise or do it via Teams or via Zoom, where one who, who is not, uh, who has a student area may be able to read the others. Then we move on, revision techniques. Pace of revision is the first thing. We can use that technique called the Promodoro method. You study for 25 minutes, then you take a break. And that's what I would advise. 25 minutes, then you take a break. Then plan to revise the complex material when you are fresh, uh, when you are fresh and have a block of time. So, but uh, don't uh, wait, it is late into the night, you have, you have been revising the entire day, then there's some complex material you're trying to revise. The, the revision will be very ineffective. Plan to revise material when you have rest time, or when you are getting, um, plan to revise easier material when you have rest time, or when you are getting tired. Then, number two, work repeatedly with each topic, identifying key topics, key issues, concepts, practices, theories, facts, key terms, or formulae. Show connections between one topic and another. Then uh, the next thing is order or ca categorize information to help you remember and understand. So you can use uh, what we call tables, charts. You can use uh, spider diagrams, flow diagram, pictures, color or uh, highlight important points or tables. For example, here I would say this, develop what we call schemas. For example, I, I refer to a topic like uh, research methodology. See, see the introduction, uh, the literature review. Uh, see the, the, the methodology, the data analysis, uh, the, 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 the findings, the conclusions. You see, recommendations. You can see the, expect the, the entire spectrum. You can draw uh, how they flow. So in case of certain information you have ranked, how are they related? See, for example, uh, those in education, when you are setting, uh, when we are asking questions on how you set an exam, you must relate the generation of the running out, uh, sp specific running, out, uh, running outcomes. How are they related to running experiences? How are they related to um, uh, the, 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 the Broom's taxonomy? How are they related to a table of specification? You see, you are able to, to find um, uh, spider diagrams or schemas to help you revise. Use uh, acronyms you, uh, so that uh, you're able to remember. For example, uh, you can, for, if, if you're looking at uh, systematic planning for the use of media for instruction, the Ashua model, you see? Ashua, it will help you to remember, you analyze the runner, you set the objectives, you, you select media and materials. Um, of course, you utilize the, 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 the media and materials then uh, you require the runner's participation, and then you, you of course, uh, do revision, evaluation. So it's a sure model. It will help you to 
uh, remember very, very quickly. Then cre create revision props, some edX cards, where you set question on this head and answers on the reverse side. They help you to revise. Look at the test papers, or, um, or they help you to revise. So th those are some of the revision techniques that you can apply. Then before um, maybe the actual date of the exam, you need to ensure that these logistics are put in place. When will you be able to access the exam? 8, 8 a.m.? Is it 11 a.m.? When will you be able to access the exam? The time and the date for the exam. When, how, and what format will the exam be in? Is it a closed book exam? Is it an open book exam? Okay, so you need to look at that. Then uh, where in the running management system? Where, wh how are you going to access it? I'm going to access it using the link, assessment.mku.ac.ke uh, stroke photo. You, you, know, you, you need to, to know those things. Uh, you need also to, if it's a closed book exam, you need to have uh, the Microsoft Teams, that you have to go to open the Microsoft Teams, go to your calendar, and look for the exam. Then the topics where the exam will cover, okay? Then how wrong, with the ans how wrong, uh, how wrong answers should be? How wrong answers should be? So when you ask these uh, six marks questions, so how much should you write? Ten marks questions, that way. Whether you need to, to do some reference, then uh, the type of questions, are they essay, short answer questions? Are you generating a report? So when you have all these logistics in place, they will help you to calm your nerves. And when your nerves are steady, you can be able to prepare for the exam. Step three, the day before the online examination. The first thing you must ensure is the examination equipment. What do I mean here? You must ensure that you have your laptop, desktop, smartphone or a tablet in good working order. Don't gamble. Ensure that your laptop is in good working condition or your smartphone or your tablet. And then uh, check, on, check that any battery powered device is charged in advance and keep a charger nearby. So, so that uh, not, in a not in a given time, if power runs out, that uh, you're not able to continue with the exam. Then check that you can upload the documents, like we talked about fire or upload. So you must know how to upload the documents, um, like uh, we demonstrated earlier. Number two, ensure you have basic stationery, such as a notepad, pens, pencils, so that you are able to write down uh, how you are going to respond to the question. And if it's a question where it requires you to work out, you can work out on uh, the, 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 the notepad which you use to upload. Then ensure you have any approved displaying specific resources. Could it be calculators? Could be it log tables? Could be maps? Could it be charts? Whatever you are required by your course, ensure that you have it. So that is about the examination equipment that you should ensure you have. Number two, internet connectivity. You can be able to access internet via hotspots, maybe from your phone to your laptop, or even, even if you are using your phone, it could be phone to phone. Uh, you could access it from via Wi-Fi or MiFi or fiber cable or satellite. So those are the, uh, the access points for internet. Then if you are using your phone, buy enough bad bados. Uh, Mount Kenya University has partnered with Safaricom to give you e learning bados at a cheaper cost. So if you use the, this code, star 54, star 544, star 60 hash, you can be able to, ch to purchase 10 GB of VRAN in Bados at only 500 shillings. So you, and you can be able to use them during the entire examination period. In the case you have not registered for the e-learning Bados uh, for Safaricom subscribers, quickly go to your student portal and do that, register. Or you can be able to purchase your own bados, uh, but ensure at least you have two GB for every exam to be on, on the safe side. Number three, you need to create the examination environment. Ensure you have a space which is quiet, free from sounds, uh, from music, telephone or other sounds, and free from interruptions with a desk, a comfortable chair, adequate writing, well ventilated, with a, an internet connected computer with Microsoft Word or equivalent. So, because you, you, you are likely to type in. Then, you should also ensure that uh, 
where you sit. The right is in front of you, not behind you. So that uh, we want to see you when you do the exam, especially for the cross book exam. Um, even for the op open book exam, when, as, you, as you do your work, um, you, you let the, the right be in front of you, not behind you. So you should be facing the right so that you get adequate writing uh, as you do your exams. If you're in, in a shared house, ensure that everyone knows that you are doing an exam so as to minimize the unnecessary interruptions or distractions where possible. Then remind yourself about the, reng the length of time you have to spend on your exam. So prepare, you are going to do one, in the case of course book exam, we want you to sit uh, where you are seated for one or two or three hour, uh, hours. So I, I know that uh, we don't want you to keep moving out because you, we are monitoring. But for the open book exam, uh, of course you require a good uh, examination environment uh, because we are, not, we are not going to monitor that because we want you to generate knowledge. Then practice your breathing and mindfulness. Keep hydrated and ensure you have adequate and healthy meal before you undertaking your exam. So don't starve yourself. Ensure you are well uh, hydrated as you sit for your examination. Then step four, during the online examination, what do you need to do? I know there could be examination anxiety. Even as we do, we all, nobody don't, nobody, uh, who, everybody of us uh, fear exams. We all fear exams. I don't think there's anybody who, who don't fear exams. So there's, there could be some examination anxiety. Because one, you won't perform well. Uh, and especially uh, that you are doing maybe these exams for the first time. So you make sure you, you, can, you, um, you calm your nerves. How, how do you do it? You can use the breathing exercise. What do you do? You breathe in uh, through the nose for four seconds. Then you hold the breath for four seconds. Then you breathe out through the mouth again for four seconds. The breathing exercise. It will help you uh, to uh, um, wipe off the examination anxiety. Then... Start your examination paper when you have everything prepared, uh, prepared to, to, to uh, when you have everything prepared to do so. So ensure that uh, you have your laptop is ready, you have uh, your phone if you are going to scan any document, you have your USB, you have uh, put on your rights, then uh, uh, you have bados, enough bados, you have the examination material, you have a writing pad, you have the pencils, you have ruler, you have pen. You have a highlighter, all those things, you have, you have them. So then, uh, as, you read the, as you do the examination, um, of course, once you have been able to access it, read the examination uh, uh, instructions very, very carefully. Then uh, divide your time. Uh, this exam, for example, let me give the scenario. For, for cross book examinations, we have different scenarios. You may find that uh, we are going to give you five, section A, will contain five, examina uh, five examination questions of six marks each to make a total of 30. So you'll be able to tackle five questions of six marks. So you may be, be able to see, you, may, you, may, you do that in an hour. Section B, you'll be required to do two questions of 20 marks. So uh, that makes 40 marks. So you can see, in this case, we may be require question one, uh, if the exam is for two hours, question one, one hour, uh, uh, or, or maybe 40 minutes. Question two, you divide the remaining time so that uh, you will be able to give 40 minutes, 40 minutes. So that time, you have divided the, the time uh, within the, the how you are going to tackle the questions. Then if it's section A, you have uh, maybe 40 minutes to work out uh, uh, five questions. So ideally about eight Eight, eight, eight minutes per question. So you need to work out that so that uh, as you move on, uh, you may be able uh, to, 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 to do your exams in a very good time. Remember we had a few minutes, like 15 minutes for you to be, to be able to, uh, in, an open, in an online examination. So you can take that time to, to um, review your answers before you are prod. So you need to look at that. So check that you have everything necessary before you start the online examination. Then uh, sometimes you may go blank. You, got, you open the, the, the exam and then you go blank. What do you do? Don't panic. 
Take a minute or two to practice your breathing and mind focusing technique. Like we have said, breathe in, using your nose for four minutes, hold your breath for four minutes, uh, for four seconds, sorry, and then breathe out through your mouth again for four seconds. So you can do the, your breathing and mind focusing technique. Reread the instructions. Perhaps that's why you are not getting the question. Maybe you, read, you need to reread the stem of the question. Then read what you have completed so, so fast to see whether you have gone off track. Hmm? So you may take a few minutes to plan your next steps. Then note down everything you know about the topic. This will help you refocus. So if your mind goes blank, that's what you can do. You can uh, use your brief, uh, breath taking uh, exercise or mind focusing technique to take you back, uh, to maybe uh, bring back what you had learned earlier. Then... Uh, you need to keep uh, an eye on the time. So if you check uh, the exams, the online examination, in the running management system on the top, uh, on, uh, on top there, there is a time, the ti there is a timer. It keeps uh, telling you how much time uh, you have used, how much time is remaining. So when you start the exam, if it is three hours, 15 minutes, then it count, it, uh, it be, it's a countdown timer. So you keep checking how much time you have. Then write down quick for short answer questions. You can quickly type in in your word processor. Then you cut and paste them in the section provided in the examination sites. Uh, for fire upload, quickly read the question. Take your writing pad, uh, work out. Then take your phone, scan. Then using your USB, connect to your, to your laptop and quickly uh, upload uh, uh, what you have uh, done. Suppose you have technical problems. You try to upload, it doesn't go through. Uh, there's internet problems maybe in your area. The, the, system, uh, the system is hanging. So what, don't panic. So quickly, uh, you should always ensure that you have the contact of your instructor, the contact of your lecturer, or uh, the, the customer care uh, using 0719-153. Uh, 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 0 0719-153-000. Quickly call. And then we are able to advise you what to do. Uh, because we care. We care about you. And we are there. We, we, we want to journey with you, uh, with you during your exam. So quickly seek help from your lecturer, customer care. Then we have uh, Microsoft support. So quickly allow us to know what is happening. In the case there is an error, you can quickly scan and send. Maybe an email uh, to MIS support. Um, or maybe to your unit lecturer. Uh, so ensure you have the email and the telephone number for your lecturer so that you can quickly tell us. Then check your work before you, you submit. So ensure the answers are complete, then you click uh, submit. So um, the most important thing that I, I want to recap is, uh, is uh, this aspect of um, how do you, how do you, um, Access. How do you, first of all, how do you uh, book for the examination? We need to look at that again. Um, how you, 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 you book for this uh, uh, examination. So this, you must know how to book for online examination. So uh, we have said, you open your student portal, go to course registration, then examination registration, you choose the year, and then the semester. Then you see the units there, you click on the unit, then you book the session. That is very, very, very important uh, for you to, to be able to, uh, uh, to prepare for that. Then we have said another very key important area that you need to check is how do you ex access the exam during the examination day. So you need to um, quickly access the examination using this uh, link, assessment.mku.ac stroke portal. You log in with your credentials, you go to membership, you click the title of the unit, you go to test and quizzes, then uh, you'll be able to see the unit there, you read the instructions, you do a, a, a pledge of honor, and then you begin your examination. So for me to wind up, I want to wish you well in your examination. Remember you have said there are two sets of, there are two types of examinations, the cross book examinations, or the open book examination. For closed book examinations, you don't, we don't want you to come with uh, any material during the examination. 
and we will monitor them or we will do infiltration via Microsoft Teams. Then for open book examinations, you can come with the material. If it is restricted, you come with only the material required. If it is unrestricted, you can come with uh, uh, any, any material. But don't carry everything. Kindly, um, only the materials you had used to revise. Just bring that to the examination room. So don't carry everything. Then uh, uh, in that case, you are able to do your examinations, um, upload where you are required to upload, and then submit. In case, for example, uh, the time has run out and you have not been able to finish, the system will automatically submit your work up to the point at which you have reached when the examination time has come to an end. Otherwise, on behalf of the university, I want to take this opportunity to wish you well in your forthcoming examinations, which will start on uh, next week. Uh, revise, prepare yourself, ensure you have the right materials before you start the examination, and then success in your examination. Remember, at Mount Kenya University, um, we are preparing you for the job market. So we will prepare you in the right way, give you the exams, which uh, we will be able to demonstrate the competencies that, that you have acquired so that the employers out there may quickly be able to uh, uh, hire you once you complete your studies. Otherwise, I wish you well and may God bless you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.